Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as the Revit Kid. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Twin Motion 2020. For those of you who have been following me for a few years now, you'll know that in the past maybe five years, I have been reviewing and using Lumion for all of my real-time rendering needs. I'm a big fan of Lumion. I've always been a big fan of Lumion. But you've probably noticed that my last two reviews of Lumion, I've been a little disappointed with some of the features. This is not to say that I'm going to do a compare and contrast between Lumion and Twinmotion today. That may be in the future. But the lack of features or new features in Lumion led me to start looking at some different options. And some of your comments and emails um, led me to Twinmotion, which I did try back in 2012, which um, times have changed quite a bit from 2012 till now. Um, back then, it was definitely very gamey looking. Uh, which is something that you can say of a lot of uh, real-time rendering software until recently. Um, and so seeing a teaser video for Twin Motion 2020 made me really want to look into it. So what I did is over the last two months, I, um, I've been using Twin Motion 2019, and um, I was also able to get a review copy, an early copy of Twin Motion 2020. Uh, working with the Epic Games crew, which is awesome. And so for the last two to three weeks, I've been messing with 2020. So I got my workflow down for 2019, and then I got to check out 2020 and some of the new things. So today what we're going to talk about is actually 2020. And I'm going to give you some awesome examples of what I like best about it, and then maybe some of the things that I think could be improved on. So to get started, obviously I'm using Twinmotion um, and using it with Revit. And so uh, we'll start with the plugin and the interoperability between Twin, between Revit and Twinmotion. Um, as the same with Lumion and, and some other real-time rendering engines other than Enscape, which sits on top of Revit, um, there's a plugin. You export your model, you import your model, you apply materials or bring in whatever materials you can, and uh, then you make your scene. Um, there is a live sync similar to the live sync for Lumion, which is cool. Um, I honestly never really get a lot of use out of that. I personally would rather export the, the model as is um, and then work on my scene sort of stagnant. Um, the real-time sort of designing and viewing in, in a separate engine uh, just hasn't really been useful for me. Um, what you'll see, and I am going to be reviewing Enscape next, what you'll see is that um, that software and setup is very conducive to using while you're designing. So anyways, the plugin works fine. It's just an XPX export, uh, exporter. Um, the only thing, and this is a comment that I have to anyone who's making plugins that export to Rev from Revit to something, it'd be really nice if you could batch export. Um, Lumion doesn't have it. Twinmotion doesn't have it. You have to individually export your views. For the most part, it's okay, but if you're doing like a multi-phase plan or maybe you want to have multiple um, um, objects in different exports, it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So otherwise, export has seemed to work fine. I had no issues exporting and importing from Twinmotion into Revit. So let's start looking at the things that I like about Twinmotion. The first thing I noticed immediately when working in Twinmotion is the speed. What I mean by the speed is the actual frames per second. So the second you open a scene, an individual scene um, with nothing in it, um, you're running at 180 plus frames per second, which makes sense. There's no models in it. But I've gone and I've created extremely large models. We're talking little city blocks. We're talking little city blocks with tall 21-story buildings. And I'm still running. This is a fully populated scene. And I'm still running in the 20 to 30 frames per second. I know some of you gamers may be like, oh my god, that's nothing. But the reality is when you're building a detailed scene with trees, people, cars, plants, Revit models, um, running at 20 to 30 frames per second is extremely fast. So Orbiting and moving around in twin motion at 20 to 30 frames per second is such a relief. Speaking of a relief, what you will have noticed, and again, I don't want to compare it to Lumion, but I am a Lumion user and I've been one for five years, so I have it's just gonna it's gonna happen naturally. But you will know that since day one, so my very first review of Lumion, which I think was Lumion 5, so it was five years ago at least, um, the first thing I complained about is they need to increase the layer, the amount of visibility layers. So Lumion only has 20 visibility layers. Twinmotion has unlimited visibility layers, and it is amazing. So the way the layer structure works 
is it's um, a folder structure and uh, you can have a visibility control over entire folders, objects within the folder, and so on and so forth, and there's no limitation. You can reorganize, move, um, push and pull things around, and then you can also save your layer states as phases. So all in all, the layer system is phenomenal. It is a awesome, huge relief to be able to not worry about running out of visibility layers when building large multi-phase scenes. So kudos to Twinmotion for, for getting that done. So now let's talk about the user interface. The user interface took a little bit of time for me to get used to, but it's not because it's difficult or challenging to use. The user interface is just a little different. So it's pretty simple. There's a bar across the bottom, which is your sort of main toolbar. There is a pullout window on the right, which um, contains your phasing, stats, um, building uh, BIM information, I guess uh, you could call it and as well as your layer states. And then on your left is your model library. You can pull that out and you can drag your model library and so on and so forth. And so that's pretty cool. Um, the, my, my biggest complaint is not that there's a big bar on the bottom, but it's sort of how that bar is utilized. And so um, is it, there's a menu structure within each, within each bigger button, so to speak. And so getting used to the fact that there's a little more that you have to click to get deeper into folders and then to get back you kind of have to click the folder structure to get back that took a little bit of while little little while to get used to um, kind of like for those of you not um, or just learning Revit or remember when you were learning Revit um, dealing with <laughs> understanding how um, how many dialogues you may get deep you know four or five dialogues deep and then either okay 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 or cancel 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 you know it's sort of like getting used to that which is fine um, and the other piece of it is I kind of wish um, you can control the size of that bar. Um, you know, there's just icons on it, really. I mean, and and it would be nice if you could make it a little smaller if you wanted a bigger viewing pane or something like that. But otherwise, personally, I think it's a little bit more um, user friendly than other software. Um, you know, it's it's I kind of just I don't think I looked at a single tutorial when I was learning it. Um, so it it must be pretty intuitive because I basically found everything I needed. So. When it comes to user interface, to me, that's sort of one of the biggest things. Is um, if even if you're just clicking around, you can you can easily find what you need. So, uh, good user interface, simple to use, simple to learn. The next thing, um, and this is more of a not just a general Twin Motion, but a Twin Motion 2020 um, comment, is the model library. And so, in Twin Motion 2019, um, the model library was good. There was a lot of stuff, but to be to be honest, it didn't look all that realistic. Um, the trees, the plants. Um, they all kind of had a cartoony, gamey, again, feel like a video game. And the characters, uh, they did have a lot of characters, but to be fair, they, they, if they didn't really look that realistic. You know, having characters that move in a scene, um, it can be challenging to get ones that look realistic uh, in a rendering. And so um, Twin Motion 2020, they did, they did a great job improving their um, models, um, not only just people, but also the plants and vegetation, which we'll talk about in a second. But the people, they look great. Um, what's really cool about it is that they look much more realistic now if you get a little closer to them. Um, they also um, have multiple settings for the color of their clothes or the type of clothes they're wearing. Um, they're posing, so a lot of them are animated characters and you can pose them in different ways, even to the point where you can actually make them dance. If you really want to have dancing in your scene, maybe you're rendering a nightclub or something like that. But <laughs> um, Pretty cool. Um, and like I said, the nice thing about it is that they... They, they look much more realistic. Um, so if you end up being closer to these to the people in your scenes and you want them moving around and giving you um, a, a different dynamic to your scene, perfect. Uh, which brings me to vegetation. So um, Epic Games uh, acquired Quixel and they also teamed up with XFrog. So for some of you, the, this, these terms may mean nothing, but uh, in the sort of ArcViz and um, uh, video game creation environment, those are those are big, big libraries of great content. Um, models that are created from actual scans. Um, XFrog has been making vegetation forever. Um, and so what they did is they, they created some really hyper-realistic vegetation. And what's really cool about it is not only does it look much better than 2019, but it also, instead of scaling to make it larger, so normally you would just take a, a tree and you would just scale it up uniformly, what they did is they, they made it grow. And so what that means is um, you're going from an infant tree to a full, fully grown tree, and the tree itself is actually um, evolving and growing over time. So it's adding branches, it's, it's changing based on the type of tree it is. So 
really cool because you don't need a ton of trees now and just by changing the with the where they are in their growth and their in their life basically um, you have a variety of a bunch of different trees super cool super powerful another great and powerful thing that was added is the vegetation scatter so in most um, 3D uh, real-time rendering programs, you're either clicking, click, 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 click to place a bunch of items, or you're using some sort of a mass placement where you're click, 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 and it's sort of going along a line, or you're actually just painting with a brush. All of those things work, they're fine, but using a vegetation scatter, or a scatter by material, you can think of it, what you can do is you can actually um, place vegetation or any items, I think they actually give you quite a bit quite a few options for items, but you can actually almost do a paint bucket fill. And you can click a material and it's going to randomly scatter um, whatever objects you want across that material. So you can have different materials, you have green roofs, you can have sites, and so on and so forth. And then once they're placed, you can also control all the settings within those objects. You control the growth of the trees, the the, um, the color, the hue, the, the the time of year, etc. So really cool, really powerful, and man does it make it extremely fast and easy to create full forests, which is always a hard thing to do. But context is always so important in these images, so being able to sort of just click, 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 and, and place all your trees in one click is awesome. And then last but not least, on the things that I like in, tw in Twin Motion 2020, is the actual image and movie quality. So as I mentioned before, when I first tried Twin Motion back in 2012, the quality was not there. The shadows were flat, the reflections were rough, um, and it just looked like a video game. And it looked like at the time, in 2012, video games were necessarily hyper-realistic. Um, and then in 2019, they did a little bit better, um, and my, my you know, two months of using 2019 and trying to get it to look the way I wanted, I realized that the only way to get it to look the way I wanted was to do some crazy workarounds um, to adding reflections and shadows. And so, uh, you know, if you YouTube, if you if you search on YouTube right now for you know realistic twin motion 2019 scene, you'll see what I'm talking about. People are placing decals that are shadows to add and punch the shadows up, and adding different reflection blocks. And instead of having sunlight come in the window, um, they're actually just putting a bunch of lights outside and shining them in the window um, because the reflection and the shading was much better with artificial light. What's great is. Um, Twin motion in Twin Motion 2020, and this came directly from the developers telling me that their biggest um, focus with this release was getting rid of that gamey look and feel. So they looked, they, so they t they dug into the Unreal Engine and they tried to pull out as many of the higher quality things that they could while still keeping performance workable, which was great, and I really appreciated it. So they added a bunch uh, a bunch of new ways of reflections. Um, a bunch of new shading sort of things. Um, they added a, a real sky box, which is more like a global illumination, real sky type of type of setting. So all of these things combined um, to make a much better image and video quality. And so the images are softer, they're more realistic, the shadows look better, um, you're not getting crazy contrast, and uh, overall just a, a, a immensely better um, product. So last but not least, kudos for them on that one. <laughs> So as far as sort of the things that I liked and the things that I'm really enjoying about Twinmotion 2020, we have the speed uh, at which you can use it. We have unlimited layers and the layer visibility settings, which is great. Um, we have the model library and the vegetation, um, as well as vegetation scatter. And then finally, the actual images um, um, look much, much better. So hyper-realistic, really fast. And they're also extremely, they export extremely fast. I didn't mention that before. Um, so uh, twin motion what's really nice about it is what you see is really close to what you get on the export there's not any post-processing type of rendering ray tracing happening um, and they've done a really good job at that and so you can pump out a, a 4k rendering in uh, 18 seconds um, or a whole series of them I, I, I rendered you know 30 4k images in like six minutes and and that's just mind-blowing right so that goes along with speed and quality but then there are some things that um, I'm not going to say I don't like, um, but there's some things that I think could could have improved, could be improved. So rather than just saying that they're cons of the software, um, you know, pros and cons, I'd rather just say these are things that um, either they're there and they could be improved on, or maybe they're just something that's not there yet and, and I think should be there. And so the, the, the first thing is, is being able to copy and paste specific settings. Um, so the way it works is um, if you were to create an image or a video, um, you can set um, lots of different things for those images or videos. You can set the location, you can set the lighting, um, different special effects, depth of fields, um, rain, shine, snow, 
I mean, there's all these settings that you apply to that specific camera, which is cool because then you could have multiple cameras with different daytimes, different um, weather settings, different whatever, right? But you cannot copy and paste those settings from one camera to another. So what that means is if you create an image of a scene, and then maybe you make four or five other images within that same scene, and you want those images to always look the same, they're just different viewpoints. If I was to modify that original image, maybe I modify the sun settings, maybe the brightness, contrast, different things, um, and then you want to apply it to the other six views, you actually have to manually go into each view and maybe type in the number and remember the number. There's no way to copy and paste the settings. So that's a little bit of a, of, of a downer. Um, it's manageable and you can deal with it. Um, it does keep your settings if you create one image and then you create more images afterwards. It does keep your settings from the first image, but if you modify them, you have to go back. So a little bit of a negative, but not a deal breaker. The other sort of nitpicky thing that, that's been bothering me is um, the import objects uh, user interface. And so remember that black bar I was talking about on the bottom? When you're importing a lot of objects into a scene, um, it fills up pretty quickly. It kind of shows this goofy icon with text on the bottom. And then the text of your import is actually cut off. And there's no way to see the full text. So if you have a lot of import and ones with like long names, you actually can't see what they are. And, and it builds up. So it's a little bit of annoyance. Um, maybe just the ability to switch that to like a detail view or a list view is all that would, it would need. But uh, just one of those things that's kind of annoyed me over the last uh, couple of months. So those are kind of my things I like and things I think could be improved of Twinmotion 2020. So the final thing that I like about Twinmotion 2020 is the price. So for those of you who have not been in following Twinmotion and the uh, Epic Games acquisition of Twinmotion, um, Twinmotion 2019 has been 100% free since the acquisition, uh, which was a year ago. I don't even know how long ago it is from now, but 100% free. If you have an Epic Games account um, and we're using Twinmotion 2019, Twinmotion 2020 is 100% free until the end of this year. And then I'm not sure what it'll be, but either way, if you are a brand new user, it's still only $4.99 for the year, I believe. Um, the details will be linked below and in my blog post just in case things change from when I record this till now. But as you can see, that's a very, very reasonably priced program for what you're getting, I think. So in conclusion, Twinmotion 2020 is going to be a game changer. I think this is the first release that you're really seeing Epic Games acquisition of Twinmotion injected into this AEC um, real-time rendering um, environment. So the backing of a multi-billion dollar video game company is something unique, but as you can see, we're reaping the benefits of it already. I'm a huge fan of it so far. I've been using it pretty extensively over the last two months, and I continue to use it. Will it replace Lumion in my arsenal? I don't know yet. <laughs> it's looking pretty good, but we'll see. I'm going to continue using them, and uh, you will be the first to know um, what the decision is. But that's my little review on Twinmotion 2020. Check out all the links below um, for more information on it, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think, and um, I'll talk to you guys later.